Zab Zen. Welcome back to Creative Chat Cafe. It is Wednesday, right? 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Well, it is Creative Chat Cafe on EntrepreneurSetStore.com. So if you're kind of brand new rookie to the show, if you're wondering what is Creative Chat Cafe, so we're actually at the talk show hangout that brings you guidance, inspiration, results for all your marketing, business development, and leadership needs. I am Zab Zen, your host. Could be sometimes crazy, but you're crazy host. But I've got a great panel of ladies right here who's joining me. Uh, um, if you've if you've watched our shows before, you've seen Tina Kadish on the show. Um, she's been our regular co-host uh, on Crazy Chat Cafe, and I also have. Uh, Brittany Kara, all the way from Southern California. So she's the rookie on the show today, but we we're not gonna give her rookie treatment. She's she's one of our great gals out here. She's gonna share a lot of information. So before we get started, a little bit of housekeeping. Just wanted to share with you folks out there who's just watching the show, right? We do have a hashtag for the show. I mean, this is the 21st century. Who doesn't use hashtag, right, ladies? We have a hashtag, hashtag Creative Chat Cafe. So if you ever are lost or just need to backtrack some of the past episodes or where to watch, just Google search Creative Chat Cafe, I mean, hashtag Creative Chat Cafe, and you'll find us. So before we get started, let's get these two ladies right here to introduce themselves because I'm sure for some of you folks out there who are just tuning in for the first time, you want to kind of know who we are. So maybe, Tina, you can get started. Welcome, ladies, to the show. Okay. Hello. Uh, thank you so much, Seth, for having me again on uh, Creative Chat Cafe today. Um, mm -hmm. my, name, uh, my name is Tina Kadish, and my company name is Life is Ideal. I empower individuals to create their ideal life abundantly and also healthy. Yay! Thank you, Tina. Thank you. Our rookie gal, Brittany Kara, go ahead. Well, I'm excited to be on, so thank you for having me. I'm honored to be on the show. My name is Brittany Kara, and I'm an author, a transformation coach, and success coach, and I teach individuals how to take control of their life in all areas, health, financial, abundance, spirituality, across the board, just transformation and developing the leader within them. Awesome. Thank you so much. Woohoo! So, for many of you who kind of don't know uh, what the format of the show is, so we're kind of usually going to do three things. The first part of the show, we're just going to have like a basic casual conversation about the topic today, how to identify leaders in your team. Very important. We all lead throughout our life from that high to adult life, right? So we're going to share all our experience and, you know, uh, take some notes. And the second part, of course, you know, we just don't discuss and have a conversation about it, but we're also going to give you some tips how you too can, you know, identify leaders in your team. And before we go, before we close, we always love to provide you inspirational resources, maybe an article, image, graphic, whatever, so that you can actually share that and spread the great word. So um, let's get started. So ladies, you know, uh, whether we're solopreneurs, small business owner, I, I believe that many of us have worked with other people um, that kind of we call our team. And you both ladies have worked with, I mean, uh, from your businesses, right, in your businesses, I'm sure you both have worked with um, multiple team members. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yes. yes. Yeah. Definitely. Awesome. Um, and that's why I say, you know, we start leading from a very young age to, you know, to our, throughout our adult life. But I think the most important element within a team is kind of knowing who has the leadership skills because we want to work with leaders, you know, people who are visionaries, right, thought leaders. But let me ask you this, you know, uh, but, uh, let me ask everyone today, like, would you rather work with someone who selects and won free rides or would you rather work with someone who has the leadership qualities that can inspire, motivate, lead, and guide you? What about you, Tina? Do you Definitely. like to work with somebody who just loves a free ride, or do you want a leader? I definitely want a leader. I want someone that is um, solution oriented. I want someone that really says to me, you know, Tina, I can do that. Um, think of, you know, instead of thinking of a problem, think of the solution. I'm looking for, you know, solution oriented people. Um, so a lot that. has to do with that. And I'm not looking for everybody, you know, has excuses, but let's turn that around and let's create solutions. And I'm not, you know, Absolutely. that's what I'm looking for in people. Give me a solution. How about you, Brittany? You know, uh, 
who do you like to work with? Absolutely. Well, I agree with what Tina said. You know, I look for people that have the drive. They have a special energy and light about them. They're not looking for a handout, but they're mm. looking to put in the work and do the work on the inside as well as the outside to develop their innate leadership skills that I think we all have. Yes. But it's about being open to the process of, hey, you know what? Every master was once a disaster, and you have to go through that to really find that. It's true, right? You that's have to true. Find that. Very true. Very true. <laughs> so that's what I look for, people that are, are motivated and willing to commit to the process. I mean, can you imagine not, uh, working with somebody who's not motivated? I mean, um, this was just something that I brought up uh, actually a day a day ago I was saying to somebody because we're talking about our team members because I actually have an internship program at Entrepreneurs at SOAR and I said you know um, there is such a huge difference between a motivated uh, team member and not because I feel that as leaders you know we um, need to motivate and cultivate new leaders by showing examples and I think when we lead by example, you know, other people follow. The biggest thing about working with not uh, unmotivated people are like I feel like they'll suck the energy out of you. <laughs> Am I right, ladies? <laughs> you know. So, uh, but uh, Tina, let me ask you this. You know, I know that you have a business and you have a great team but how do you as a leader kinda identify the next leader in your team because it's important for us to know and to kinda you know look out for the next leader that we can kind on kind of uh, kind of build upon and help them develop their skills to kinda run another group of people lead other people it's important to know what uh, the leadership skills and how do you identify them I identify them. One of the things that I look for is their attitude. Um, mm -hmm. Attitude for me is very important. Uh, I, I believe I that like that percent is about attitude. Um, so folks, attitude, let me give you that dong. <laughs> We're going to have the attitude, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, attitude determines your altitude, as they say. So the, yes. the higher your attitude, the you know the how you can go. It's that can-do mentality. It's being optimistic. It's um, finding a solution, like I shared with you a few minutes ago. Yeah. So it's really all about the attitude. And you know, like I said, uh, I'm looking for solution-oriented people. You know, I will do this. And having that drive that Brittany said, having that energy, um, is really contagious as well. Mm -hmm. um, and it really. Um, creates more energy. It's contagious when you have that person with the right attitude. That's true. And I think, you know, there's the difference between a cultivated attitude and a natural positive attitude because sometimes if somebody uh, cultivate it well, it's something that you learn, it's a process, it's a journey, it doesn't happen overnight. Those seem to last longer versus, you know, uh, if you start off with a good attitude and you hang out the wrong people or the wrong crowd and then your peers affect your attitude. Definitely. Um, you know, and who you're hanging around with, you, try, you know, also, uh, um, Help you know prevents you from having a, a good attitude sometimes. Yeah. So you really have to hang around with people that are positive. Um, and they've Very said good. you know look at the five people <laughs> that you hang around with. So look at your five team members. Scary. What type of five members are they? And that will really there's people that you know I've had team members like I don't even want you on my team. <laughs> la, 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 la. <laughs> and that's okay. <laughs> Not like that. I used yeah. to be, you know, desperate. No, yeah. I'm yeah. looking for the right people, and attitude is very important to build a team. Very, very true. Very true because um, you mentioned something very important that kind of reminded me of uh, something. It's Robert Kiyosaki. When I attended one of his training seminars, he, he actually was the person that I remember so well mentioning about the five people mm -hmm. um, that you actually hang around with. So if you want to be a leader, you might want to include all the five people as you know great leaders that you look up to or really people with great attitude. Mm -hmm. um, he, I remember Robert Kiyosaki mentioning that he says, bring me five of the people that you hang, hang out the most almost every day of your life, week, you know, lunch, dinner, whatever. Bring me those five people that you hang out most often with, and I'll tell you where you are in five years from now. I was like, like a cricket. Wow. 
Yeah, because it's kind of scary. Because if you um, if you are looking at your friends and you don't see any leaders there, then you may not be a leader in two years' time. So that's what he said. So that was very very poignant. I think um, the fact about having a great attitude and hang out around people that you know you want to be with, and if you want to be a great leader, hang out among leaders. Sure. Brittany, what about you? How do you find you know, today's topic relevant to the work that you do because it's important for us to identify leaders and um, how is it relevant to to what you do in your business? Well, it it is the lifeline of my business. You know, I've been in network marketing for almost seven years and if you don't develop leaders, mm -hmm. it, leadership is like air in my business. And so um, I'm constantly looking for people that have the attitude like um, Tina just mentioned, um, I look for the light behind a person's eyes. That might sound a little bit maybe woo-woo, but there is a special light in someone's eyes when they're hungry and they want it. And so maybe they're hanging out with five of the wrong people, but they're open to changing that circle. Mm -hmm. And I always want to meet people where they're at, but lift them out of where they're at as well and inspire them to be more. So I look for the light and I look for their drive in terms of if I ask them to do something, they do it. And they're like, hey, I want more. They're hungry. You know, Les Brown says we got to be hungry for life. we got to be hungry for our dreams. Yeah. And so those are the types of people. And, in you know, in network marketing, my organization, I can look and see who has their hand up raised saying, I'm willing to do the work. Just, you know, show me how. And mm -hmm. that's who I want. I don't want to be dragging. Yeah. If someone can't show up on time, if someone can't, be punctual if they can't um, do the one thing I ask them to do then they don't want it bad enough and I have to re I, I like to say bless and release <laughs> I bless them back okay. into their circle where they're comfortable with you know okay. so that's what I look for oh that's great points I mean um, and one of the biggest thing I think from from that perspective is the fact that really how much do they want it to you know how much do they want to be leaders because if they say they want to be leaders but they're not doing the things that get them to that position then you're just dreaming it's just wishful thinking no and another thing that I wanted to share too um, in line with that is how much pain is somebody in to make that change a lot right. of times people are comfortable they say they want it but they're not in enough pain to yeah. make that decision so I yeah. think that pain has to do with that a lot for people to make that decision. Very true. Absolutely. Absolutely. I totally agree with that. You know, you either people either do things for pleasure or pain, and when the pain of staying stuck where they're at becomes greater than the pain of change, yeah. that's when they'll change. So I look for that moment when they're on the fence of like, I'm in pain, but I want to get out. I'm ready to jump, but I'm ready to go. And then we run. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Um, so if we were to give some tips for our audience out there, you know, for those who say, hey, I want to be a leader, you know, I want to identify leaders in my team, you know, so that I could actually pass on the baton, you know, when you have multiple leaders in your team, it makes it so much easier because the effort of multiple people is better than one. What would you recommend, uh, Tina? Do you have any kind of specific suggestions or tips on, you know, how to, basically, how to identify leaders and become good leaders? Yes, definitely. Um, one other thing is um, in line with attitude. Attitude is a choice. So mm -hmm. it is, it's uh, all about you are in control. You're accountable, in other words, of your life. Um, so being held accountable means that you're not blaming others. Mm -hmm. You're not making excuses. Okay, so you're I held accountable. That. You're in control. Um, you're optimistic, goes you know, along with attitude, being optimistic, having that, that mentality. Uh, believing in yourself, but you know a lot of people don't believe in themselves. Oh my God, that's true. You know, that's that's true. That belief in themselves is very important, and that sometimes, sometimes people have to work at that that belief because they've been really crushed all their life. It depends on their where they came from, their life, their upbringing. So that is important: is being optimistic and also uh, solution oriented. You know, finding a solution is another tip and also last but not least is um, showing gratitude I think that gratitude is really huge is really even you know the things that are not going your way but finding something to be grateful about oh every, my god that's so true you know Very um, true. I've done you know three grateful things of the day every day I've done grateful 
things on Facebook, or I will also, I have a grateful journey, a gratitude journey, uh, journal, I should say, mm -hmm. where I write everything that goes on that I'm grateful for. And, you know, we don't have a perfect life, but let's find something about today that you're grateful for. I mean, waking up every morning is something to be grateful about. Oh, that's, hello, duh. <laughs> right? We always have to be grateful. And um, in, in kind of like, and a, a little bit of a follow up of what you just mentioned about being grateful and gratitude. Uh, in a previous episode uh, in the month of August, we actually had a, um, you know, a, a show talking about communication is key in leadership. And uh, one of our co-hosts, Sandra Feierstein, mentioned that uh, you know many these uh, many day, um, often these days leaders forget to show their gratitude and appreciation, and that's a great point that you brought up, uh, Tina. Because as leaders, we all want to lead all the time, but we always forget. I would say always, not often, always forget. You will have a very small number of people or leaders that would actually say thank you and say, hey, great job, pat on the back. But, you know, often many leaders forget to show gratitude. However small, I think it is very important. What's important in my team, and this is my tip for you folks out there, um, and actually in support of what Brittany mentioned earlier, you know, um, is, um, you know, you give them a test and see if they do what you, you ask them to do. My big thing with my team is, you know, um, uh, I really tell them from the get-go as a leader, I said, these are the things I expect you to do. And the first, one of the biggest things that I tell them is, if you have a question that that you think is probably small and you can probably research the answer, you need not come to me. You need Uncle Google. <laughs> and that's where you need to go first, you know? And I, that's one of the things that I kind of use, you know, it's a call to action test. What I want them to do is look for, I mean, look for the answers first until like you probably bleed and start crying and like, I can't find the answer, right? And I don't know where to go. <laughs> then you come to me and I think it helps to build, you know, those leadership skills because they want to take charge, you know, that they believe that we, the leader, believe them to do a belief and trust them to do what they need to do. And I think we also as leaders need to give the opportunity to future leaders that we're having to build and, you know, uh, kind of um, help become other leaders, future leaders, is give them the chance to make the mistakes and then, you know, give them the chance and the time to learn from you because some people just expect, the, you know, if they see a, a potential leader in their team and go, oh, that's a leader. Uh, this kid has leadership skills. I'm just going to push, push, push. But people, many people don't work like that. They need to be given some time to cultivate leadership, um, you know, skills. Uh, and, uh, and it doesn't happen overnight because I know it doesn't happen overnight for me. It de definitely doesn't happen overnight. It takes a um, And I like what you said about when you're giving someone direction, but having them be resourceful to look yeah. for the answer instead of yeah. being told what to do. I've had interns where um, you need to give them guidance, but then on their own, can they look for the answer? Absolutely. That's so true. And that's one of the biggest things I learned in my journey, you know, developing the internship program. I realized there are individuals that if they want it that bad, just like what you mentioned earlier, if they want it that bad, if they're that hungry to learn, they will get the answers. They will actually show leadership skills, you know, that they're good at doing certain things. So those are the great things that, you know, I, uh, that's actually the great concept that I use with my uh, teammates just to kind of figure out, you know, do they have leadership skills? Can they, uh, you know, manage? Can they lead certain projects before I give, uh, you know, them the full access to managing certain projects? Mm. What about you, Brittany? You know, um, what's your tips for our folks out there? Well, first of all, you know, it, it's everything you guys are talking about that you said so beautifully. It's it's finding out where somebody's at. And, and typically for me, I use social media to kind of be my advisor. Like when I first start working with someone, it's really easy to see where they're at mentally and in their heart by just what they're posting on Facebook. You know, Tina just mentioned gratitude and attitude and all those things. You know, if they're constantly complaining on Facebook and they're in the victim state, 
Yeah. And they're in this, you know, they're posting, uh, you know, candy crush saga games all day. <laughs> or whatever. But, you know, no judgment, no judgment. That's true. That gives me a, a little window into their life, into their mind. And so, you know, part of what I do is help people break through that. But like we were talking about, I need to see that you can do some homework. I need to see that you can do some research on your own, that you're committed. If I say, hey, here's a great book that helped me de develop leaderships and mm -hmm. you decide to never read it, then that's going to show me that you're not ready. You're just not ready. So I look for the people like I give them, you know, here, watch this video, read this book, and they call me the next day saying, it's done. I want more. Those are the people that I want to link arms with. And so I use social media a lot, like what are they posting, what are they doing, who are they surrounding, what are they listening to, what kind of shows do they watch, you know? That's and true. it's not being like voyeuristic or whatever, it's just, it's allowing me to kind of delve into their world and go, okay, you know, and then the second thing is to just pour greatness into people. You can be a great leader and help someone rise above without being mean, right? It's not about being mean like you're a dictator, like you must do this. It's, it's yeah. about <laughs> like, you must do it my way or you got to get out. It's about, um, there's no I in team. So it's about how do we work synergistically together and how do your talents complement my talents? And if you don't know exactly what your talents are, then let's talk about that and let's you know, cultivate what you feel comfortable with and then move forward from there. So those are some of the tips that I use personally in my business every day. And I work with, you know, I have a team of, of close to 1,600 people. So it's a lot of different personalities and it's a lot of stuff happening. But that's what I kind of use to segregate out the ones that aren't ready. Oh, and we can go on and on and talk about, you know, identifying uh, the potential leaders or just your leadership skills or helping you develop all that. By the end of the day, but you need to be hungry enough to be a leader. You're absolutely right, ladies. You know, if you know, we sometimes we see the potential in other people when they don't see it. Do you know what I mean? And then they 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 don't think that they can lead. I've had certain team members who never thought they could lead, or if they have you know leadership skills, and when I actually help them to realize it and um, make them understand certain things that they've done gave me the impression that they could lead. That was a great moment to see because you know we the leader have actually uh, detected this leadership skills in people who don't even know they could lead, and that's a great thing. Have you anyone of you both experienced something like that? Yes, I have absolutely. I can totally resonate with what you're saying. You know, it's one of the greatest feelings as a leader to see a person that was shy of leadership step yeah. into that role. And I actually had an experience on Monday night. One of my leaders um, who I've coached and mentored, you know, stepped up to the plate and did a whole presentation by herself, total training, you know, and rocked it. She rocked the room. She had presence and power and passion. And, you know, it's like we've been talking about, it's not an over, it's not a sprint. It's really yeah. a marathon of your life, of yeah. developing who you are, getting comfortable with who you are, and then being mm -hmm. able to share that, you know, light in your heart with the world. Um, Tina, I know, um, you know, we're kind of close to the end here, but I wanted to, because I know you did mention to me earlier, you have some kind of resource that may inspire our audience today. Would you like to share it with us? Yes, yes. I found an article um, that was um, it's by um, Five Tips for Having a Positive Attitude, and it was uh, Nikki Morris. Um, okay, I think you sent me the link, right? So I could probably share real quick what that uh, article is all about. Mm -hmm. Okay, I actually have it on my uh, uh, right here. So, Wait. yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so basically what I liked about this, it shows about how it benefits um, in the not only in the workplace, but just, you know, the tips of a positive workplace, what are the, what are the benefits uh, in general uh, about being positive, having that attitude that I talked about earlier. So this mm -hmm. is a great article that I found um, from this consulting firm that mm -hmm. goes into more detail with the benefits, um, you know, if you're in a workplace, how does it benefit the workplace? Attitude is, is huge. I mean, mm -hmm. it can bring the whole uh, company down just by having a negative attitude. Right. I mean, think about the uh, morale, right? Uh, you know, in that uh, environment. So I thought this was a good article. There's a lot of information on online about this topic, uh, social mm -hmm. media. 
um, wherever you're utilizing, you know, which platform. LinkedIn has a lot of things as well. I think we're going to include this link. I think we already have that link included in this page where um, this video is being shown. So definitely our audience out there could actually access the article too. So they could actually follow what you just said there. Good. Good. Yeah, so I thought it was awesome. Very so Brittany, you know, um, I know we're talking about a lot of this attitude, you know, our positive attitude. What is a good positive attitude that you kind of enjoy seeing the most from your leaders in your team? Well, I would have to say a recent example maybe that you've recently experienced and you go like, oh my God, I didn't expect her to react that way. That was a very positive attitude. Is that something that you probably could share with us? Absolutely. I think for me it's always, um, and I teach this to my kids, you know, uh, attitude of gratitude. Tina talked about that earlier. Gratitude and love are the two highest vibrational frequencies in mm -hmm. the world. So when you emit gratitude, you attract better things, positive things into your life. So when I see someone that's maybe made a mistake or they're struggling, but you know what, they're grateful for where they're at or they're grateful for the experience because they've learned something, that's a beautiful thing. I love to see that in people. So, you know, in terms of leadership, I think being a leader, you, you always have to be in a state of gratitude. And as a human, that's not always easy, right? So it's, yeah. you know, looking at moments in your life and going, okay, why is this happening now? Why is this happening on my team? Or why is this happening to me or this person I care about? And choosing to look for the, the growth rather than letting it crush you, you know? So I, I love those moments. And I just had a, a conversation this morning with a, a lady on my team who has been going through some really challenging health issues for years. And just talking about being grateful for where she's at. She's not quite at her goal, but just the process of it and just, you know, helping her through that of saying, hey, you know, every single step you take closer to your goal, be grateful for that moment in your life. So that's that's really what I resonate with. Oh, my God. Talking about gratitude, we can go on and on. You have something there, Tina, you want to say? Um, no, I agree with what Brittany is saying. It's, you know, it's that growth. At least she's taking a step. And making that decision um, with her health is is huge. Um, you're not there yet, but you're on your way. It's the journey. And you know, I know we're kind of close to the end, but I just wanted to kind of hone down on this gratitude a little bit because I think it's very inspirational. Because just taking this uh, content from the previous show is, and what I mentioned earlier is that you know, as a leader, I think even. To, Teach these to your potential leaders. You know, as leaders, do not be afraid to say thank you. Do not be afraid to show your appreciation, you know, because these are the things that would help that future leader pass on that great trait and teach other leaders that you have to be thankful. Forget your ego. I mean, hey, folks, I mean, we don't need egos. Duh. You know, we just want great leaders who, you know, can take our learning curve and teach you great leadership skills. So forget the ego. Go move on. Say thank you often. Give people a pat in the back. I tell you that pat in the back, giving them a thumbs up goes a long way. And you know, when people mirror you, the leader who has done this, you get to cultivate more great leaders. So I leave you at that, folks. And um, uh, before we go, I just want to do our standard operating procedure, kind of sharing with you guys out there where you can watch our show. Um, let me quickly put up here where our web, what our website is. So you can go to our website, entrepreneurs.soar.com. You can go to our tab that says uh, Watch Hangouts. Click on Creative Chat Cafe. And then you'll have all the, the blog. Your, it's actually the blog page that, you know, kind of, have all our previous episodes read up about the topics, you know, our, our co-hosts, our guests. And um, you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's at SOAR or Entrepreneurs at SOAR. And there is a playlist. If you love YouTube, there's a special playlist called Creative Chat Cafe 2014. You can watch all our previous shows there. And we would really love to invite you to our Google Plus community for Creative Chat Cafe so we can continue culture conversations. 
don't forget to introduce yourself. Put a picture, you know, put your website, put a video up, you know, so we get to know you a little bit better. So I also want to give these ladies here the opportunity to share with you folks out there how you can connect with them, you know, maybe engage with them a little bit more. If you have any questions, you love to what they said today on the show, um, I'll give them the opportunity to share with you, um, you know, um, how you can connect with them. Go ahead, Tina. Okay. Well, my business website is Life is Ideal. Dot com, all one word. My Facebook page is also uh, facebook.com forward slash life is ideal. And my email is tkdishcoach at gmail.com. Look forward to connecting with everybody. Yay, thank you so much. Go ahead, Brittany. Awesome. Well, you can also connect with me on my Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash Brittany Cara, two T's, N E Y K A R A. And also my website, www.brittanycara.com. And my email is brittany at vmentor.com. You can connect with me all places. I'm here to support you and answer any questions. She's a social media queen. So anyway, thank you so much, everybody. So um, I just wanted to say, um, you know, thank you again. Thank you to my co-host. Thank you for joining me on the Creative Chat Cafe show. Watch Wednesdays, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on JupinerStandard.com. Before we go, let's share some mugs, ladies. And have a great day, creative and productive week. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.